Desiree with theastrologyaddiction.com and thank you so much for watching. Today's video I want to talk about synastry and astrology and things that can make a relationship last in the long term and be more of a long term relationship, commitment, marriage, things that really bond people together and make a relationship stick because a lot of times people will want to look to astrology to see is this relationship going to last am i meant to be with this person is this something that will work in the real world long term right so a few things that you definitely want to look at in the synastry specifically are moon contacts the where your individual moons are and what the planets um in your chart are really talking to their moon basically one thing that I like to see is some Saturn because Saturn will really make something last long term. Saturn is basically the god of time. He's the grandfather of time. He will make something, uh, make you feel a responsibility towards something um, and this can make a relationship stick. Now it's not always a good um, you know, there's a million things going on in astrology, right? So there are so many different types of uh, ways that this can play out. It can be a power dynamic, it can be a control issue, which is definitely bad um, in most cases, but when you're looking at long-term compatibility and just commitment, Saturn is something that will make someone feel responsible to someone else. And so, for example, if your Saturn is opposite to your partner's moon, you may feel a responsibility to their emotional happiness, to keeping them safe, and vice versa. You know, if my partner, his Saturn is opposite to my moon, he might feel that it's his duty and responsibility in this life karmically just to support me emotionally, help me to feel better. But you know, sometimes for the moon person, that type of a contact can also feel restricting, um, binding and you know even difficult and controlling because Saturn is very you know strict and kind of cold in a way it's a good thing to see in long-term relationships it, I mean it's, it's not a, necessarily a good thing I don't think there's good and bad things in astrology if you will but it is something that will connect people for the long term right you also want to see I guess something that I see a lot is North Node contacts. So if your North Node is conjunct to someone's Venus or their Moon or any of their personal planets, it's it's sort of a karmic situation because the North Node is something that brings you physical forms into this life. It brings you things. It brings you people or you know items, things like that. So when your North Node is talking to somebody else's planet in a way it will mean that that what they have and what is inherently of them say it's their venus or their moon this is something that you you know need to kind of experience or have in your life in a way now south node contact are a little bit tougher now this is something that is kind of a regression type of a contact so if you have a south node contact with someone Say their venus is in conjunction with your south node you're regressing into old patterns of behavior because it's comfortable for you and because it makes you feel good it's a small portion of the puzzle but it's definitely something to keep in mind like if there's a negative south node contact even a mars contact i've seen that um uh yeah i've seen that dealt with that before basically your you could experience um, things from childhood that come up from your relationship with this person. You can experience just negative manifestations of anger, aggression, um, fighting, and just friction basically because you're supposed to be moving towards something else and this person the way that they are and the way they assert themselves in the world is more in line with things that you are trying to kind of move past from, right? South node, things that we want to move away from. Um, and that are really hindering to our growth. I also do see Pluto contacts with personal planets, the moon or Venus. And, you know, this can be, there are certain people who say that, you know, Pluto and Mars contacts and things like that can, can be violence in a way, but I think that every chart's going to be different and every synastry is you know, going to be different. So you can't just say that, but you can say that there will be a need for control and a need to basically own someone right if someone's pluto is square to someone's moon for example they might have a little bit of the upper hand in the relationship they might be able to call the shots more they might be more confident in the in themselves in the relationship because they know that the other person is not going to just go somewhere because they're kind of under their thumb now if someone's pluto is conjunct to venus 
um, in, in someone's chart, this can make for a more of an obsessive, controlling type of a relationship because the per Pluto person really wants to steal the Venus person in a way. If you've heard the Persephone and um, Hades myth, basically he, it's kind of a Pluto and Venus story. He right, he's he fell in love with the the maiden, the beautiful daughter, and he abducted her out of a uh, an act of lust into the underworld, where she then you know was obviously stolen and taken you know raped and, and what have you but she fell in love with him and learned to actually love him and she wanted to stay with him so then she would go back and forth through the seasons to the underworld and it would be winter and then she'd go back to visit her mother in the summer um and it would be summertime because she came up and brought the summer with her in a way so uh i just see that sort of a theme with pluto and venus contacts somebody you know just they can't control their their need for the for the other person or their lust for them so it's romantic but it can be um, over the top a little bit you definitely want to look to the angles as well so your ascendant and um, midhaven and things like that and just see you know make sure there aren't any really difficult aspects uh from like saturn or mars to those types of angles because sometimes it can just cause you know more difficulty and frustration in the things that you inherently are like the ways that you are and the the career maybe or the societal aspirations that you have somebody might hold you back or there can be friction in how you present yourself into the world and with the actual relationship you know they're two different things right the relationship is something and then your presence in the world is something else so if these two areas are not really compatible um it's hard to get on the same page with your goals and like where you're going in life so these are just a couple of um, short little tricks that I look for right away when I'm looking at synastry. Um, you can also, uh, I guess when you're looking at composite charts for the relationship, it's a, it's a bit different, but um, definitely want to look to the malefic planets like Saturn and Mars and then the um, kind of the angles are, they're very important. So thank you so much for watching. And if you're interested in a reading, my link to book is below and you can book with me anytime that is open in my schedule. Um, the types of readings I do are listed on that link as well. And you can find my website at theastrologyaddiction.com. Thank you guys so much for watching.